Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another spicy BT14 deck profile for you. Whenever you think of archetypes that get support based on BT14, there are many things that come into your brain because BT14 all in all is a very generic set in terms of generic support for generic things. Mastamon is indeed one of the winners of this nasty Masty herself thanks to all this new yellow vaccine stuff we got in BT14. Mastermon gets a boost in consistency, a boost in power, and you know, it's a little bit better than it was. It's a fun way to play yellow vaccine without fully committing to the yellow vaccine package, and you get to play Mastermon. You get to DNA, and you get to do some cool things. Now, warning before we start the, actually two warnings before we start the deck profile. One, this deck is not for the faint of heart. If you play this deck and you don't have your thinking cap on, you will not succeed with this deck. You will lose every game all the time. You have to be somewhat big brain to play this deck properly. So that's uh, number one. And number two, this deck profile is gonna look all over the place, wackier than some of my other deck profiles. And while some people are all like, oh, Mario's deck profiles are always wacky, what do you mean? And all that stuff. This one in particular is going to look pretty interesting. My only ask is that if you think about whack in this deck profile, try it first. The deck is cohesive when it all works together. Just got to know how to use it. Give the deck a try before you knock it. And that's all I want to say about it. So here's the list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And of course, please like and subscribe. Now, as we are running a primarily yellow beast Mastermon deck, the egg of choice is Tokemon BT14. Once per turn, when you add a card to security, draw, uh, draw a card. It's just draw. And we love draw. Love is really good. Draw is really good. I don't know why I said love is really good. You love the draw. That's what I was going to say. Then, of course, it's yellow vaccines. So we're playing four copies of Patamon. This Patamon is very, very strong. One of the main highlights of BT14 for me. Starting main phase, you can evolve this into level four from your security. Let yellow level four vaccine yellow. And if you do, you can put a yellow vaccine card, a yellow card with the vaccine trait on security. So it's a free evolution out of uh, once started main phase. That's nice. You also get an inheritable effect that says when you card add a card to security, you gain memory. So when you evolve with this, you use your Pokemon as the egg, you gain a memory, draw a card. A very powerful effect. And then the other yellow rookie we play, yeah, I'm only playing one other yellow rookie in this deck. Uh, four copies of Pillowmon. Pillowmon is a floodgate that stops Bloom Lord in his tracks uh, and also causes annoyances to things like D Brigade, Luga, all that stuff. These decks have to out the Pillowmon before they can properly play the game. So it's just there to kind of temper those decks back a little bit. Because your deck can be a little bit slow rolling. It can be. Um, and against those decks, they can get pretty nasty on you if you let them. So Pillowmon is just there as kind of a stopgap to say, nope. You're going to wait till I go off before you go off type of situation. And hell, you can even go off, then drop a pillow mod, then you're usually winning the game. So a pillow mod's very strong. So while this deck only has eight rookies, you know, you may not always draw a rookie, even after a mulligan. And that's not a big deal, though, because we have other good cards that are okay to start the game off turn one with, such as Ganomon. Four copies of Ganomon. This is a vaccine, by the way, so Patamon can evolve into it for free if you want to. Anyway, when you play this card, you build top three cards of your deck, you add a yellow and a purple Digimon card to your hand, bomb deck the rest, and then during your turn, if you would evolve this into an Archangel, Fallen Angel, you reduce the traits by, the evolution cost by two. Very nice, and then end of turn inheritable, you can DNA Digivolve, which comes up sometimes. So yeah, Ganamon is a main staple in Mastermon, you gotta play four copies of it all times, that's not up for debate. Um, we are playing the combo of the BT11 Andromon and Devimon. When Andromon dies, it brings back Devimon. When Devimon is here during your turn, if you have a yellow Digimon or Tamer in play, it gains Rush and Retaliation. So basically, if the Andromon dies, you bring up Devimon and then it can Rush, sometimes for game. It is like a Bushy for game, and we love Bushy for game here. So having that little combo is nice. I dedicated two spots to it because it comes up a lot, and uh, that's pretty cool. Plus, Andromon's vaccine, so that's really nice. We do play one copy of the Secret Rare Andromon from BT14. We play a lot of one ofs in this deck because deck space is super tight and there's a lot of different cards that I want to play. The nice thing about Andromon is that you can recycle it whenever you want uh, because of Mastermon. Mastermon does recover a card from your trash. So if this card's in your trash, you can always bring it back. 
but odds are it might be deleting itself and putting itself at the bottom of security list effect. When attacking, you can delete it to either bottom deck to security a virus to Dramon, or do 6,000 DP to something. You also don't have to use that if you don't want to, but when it dies, you put it to the security, and then you feel a yellow tamer, you hatch. That's pretty strong. On a leash and inheritable, put a vaccine card from your hand, the bottom of security is pretty good too. So the one of Andromon comes up. It's cool, you love to see it sometimes. The last champion you play is one copy of Geogreymon as it is limited, and uh, it's limited for good reason. Playing tamer from security is pretty strong. So yeah, uh, just, yeah, eight, eight champions, four of them being Automon, four of them being other cool cards. You love to see it. Now, the ultimate lineup is gonna look also pretty wacky. We're starting off with what might be a questionable decision, but actually it's quite okay. Uh, two copies of Angelmon, Angelmon. This Angelmon in particular has a window dwelling effect that says you may switch your security and add a card with Angel, Archangel, or Fallen Angel, and then recover one. It comes up sometimes, but sometimes it whiffs. Um, it's a it's a it's a good card to play two. I was playing three. I didn't like a three. I saw it all the time. I count the two. Two makes me happy. Also, during your turn, if you would play Lady Devimon, you gain memory. Once per turn, that's pretty nice. Finally, opponent's turn against blocker. If you have a purple Devimon to play, so having a big blocker Mastermon is always pretty strong. We do play one more different Andromon though, and it is the one with inheritable sec plus one if you control Devimon. Also, when you play, it gives something like security minus two. It does actually come up sometimes. So having that one of Andromon is nice. Now, everything else in the ultimate lineup, by the way, is just a one of. So we're going through a lot of different one offs here. We're playing one of Lady Devimon. This Lady Devimon, when did you evolve? You trash a card in your hand. If you do, it turn a, a Miri or a card with Angel, Archangel, Fallen Angel to your hand. And then uh, you get a memory for playing Angelmon once per turn. And as retaliation, if you control the other one, inheritable. Uh, it's the Angel one that pairs really well with Miri. Uh, you do have to play at least one copy of it, but the Angel one is a little bit better than it. So one copy of that, two of the Angel one, it's fine. And now um, we do play one more Lady Devimon. This is a change since I did the deck profile on Twitch and Patreon. So this is a recent addition. I was playing a different Lady Devimon, but now I'm playing this one, the original one. Just because when you evolve, you draw two discard two. This card's basically a graceful charity, and I like that. I, 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 I tested it because I was like, I want a way sometimes to draw more cards. I don't mind trashing more cards, but I want to draw more cards. I want to set up my trash. You know, have you ever had a Lucimon Chaos Mode in your hand that you just cannot get to the discard pile? Well, if that card solves that issue for you, no problem. Um, the card is kind of gas, and I do actually like it a lot, as opposed to the Lady Devimon from the Master Monster deck which is kind of hit or miss. This card's really cool. I really like it. It also has a your turn effect where you can pop a level three Digimon if you play an option, Inheritable. Doesn't come up super much, but it is there for the Windage Evolving Graceful Charity-like effect. The one copy of it, I think, is perfectly reasonable. You'll love to see it. Then we're playing one copy of Loose Mon Chaos Mode. This card, you're not gonna play it ever, just manually. You're only ever gonna play it with Master Mon's DNA Digivolving effect. But when you play this, you can pop by a little six or lower Digimon or a Tamer. So having Tamer removal in the deck is worth the spawn, in my opinion. We do play one copy of it just for that reason. And another reason too, which we'll talk about shortly when it comes up. Uh, two more ultimates to go. We're playing one copy of Madden Andromon still. It is still a really good Flame Health Scythe target. To play it, recover one, it's still fine. So we play the one copy of it. It's cool. I've thought about cutting it. If you want to cut it, you can probably cut it for the third Mandrel Mon if you want to or something. But I like it as it is. It comes up and it heals stuff. It's really cool. And lastly, one copy of Magna Andromon Ace. My favorite hand trap from BT14. If I had to pick one, it's this one. Uh, when you play it or evolve it and you can blast the volunteer your opponent's battle phase for free, you recover one if you have five or less security. Then you pop something. You do, you, do, you do minus 1,000 damage to something for every security card you have. So at most, it can nuke a 6k, and that's pretty fine. Uh, but what you might do sometimes with this card is just play it, and then evolve it into like one of your level 6s. So like this card is super valuable. You can't bring it off with Flame Health Scythe because it's too strong. But it is valuable, and it does come up as a bit of a surprise sometimes, because hand traps do do that. And usually it's there for the hand trap. I never, I rarely ever just play it and evolve it. Yeah. Um, another play that does come up though, and I will be honest with you, 
is you have Godamon, right? You have the Godamon here. The one that DNA did well in the turn, right? So evolve this to Lady Devimon, then play this for cheap, and then do a really cheap DNA evolution. It comes up sometimes. It's pretty cool. So yeah, one copy Magna and one Ace. You'd love to see it. Oh, no, Megas. Mega, Mega, Megas. Four copies of Nasty Masty. You can evolve this card for five, or you can DNA with a level five yellow, level five purple. When evolving, you get to basically heal from your trash, stick a Digimon, level five or lower, put in your security, and then you can play a Digimon out of your security, you can DNA Digivolved, and then your turn, all, actually, sorry, all turns, when you play a Digimon by an effect, you can pop something with that with level less than or equal to the Digimon that you summoned. So, uh, yeah, this card is really powerful. It's the big boss monster of the deck. Does a lot of things, heals you, plays cards, rewards you for playing cards by popping things. It's a card that you'd love to see at all times. Next, we're playing two copies of Venusmon. I really like Venusmon in this format. The more I test BT14, the more I like Venusmon. Because Venusmon, it seems like it stops almost the whole meta. Almost the whole meta. And like having two slots to it, being a vaccine, is fine. When, DNA, when evolving, you just minus one global for everything on your opponent's side of the field, and things with a security attack modifier cannot activate when it's evolving or attacking effects, and cannot attack Venus 1. Very powerful level 6, you love to see it. And we do play one more level 7, a bit of a tech card that I stole from Plague in my Discord, plays my turns. Shout out to him. I'm playing one copy of Metal Guru Mon Ace. Now, some of you might look at this and think, okay, now you're, you're cooking and you burn in the kitchen. What did you, What are you doing? So, like, hear me out. Sometimes you play a loose monkey house with a master one. They will never expect that you're playing a Melga Ace and that your loose monk chaos mode is going to turn into it if they attack. They just are not expecting it. They think, oh, you brought out chaos mode because you had to pop my tamer or whatever. Okay, reasonable. Let me move on with my life. And then they go to swing battle phase. And then all of a sudden, that loose mod turns into a Metal Guru Mon Ace, ends their turn because you discard three cards and gain through memory, pass the memory and give over to you. They get their attack off, that's fine, but then it's your turn, and then you win the game. It's super strong. Like, you, it's only ever used in that scenario. It's come up, like, five times in all the matches. I think five's a lot. Um, but it wins the game every time. It's crazy. Uh, the card's just really fun. It, it's it's a surprise factor. It's like, oh, wow, you really played that card. I guess I lose now. And that's just kind of how it goes. When I attack as well, discard a card, bounce the lowest card, lowest level card. That's fine. But, like, it is really there for the surprise wow factor. It works. It's cool. Give it a try. If you want to cut it, you can for a lot of other cards, whatever. But I, I like it. The, the one of tech is really cool. Level 7s, we're just doing one copy of Shine Green on Ruin Mode as a top end. It allows you to one evolve global 5, on the leash in global 5, minus 5 to everything, of course. And the end of attack, pop itself, pop another Digimon, heal one, hatch an egg. If you have a tamer, which you will, uh, it's just a very strong boss monster. You'll love to see it. Alright, tamers. We're playing three copies of Miri. Four is overkill, do not play four. Three is fine. Start your turn, you gain memory. During your turn, if you would Digivolve into Andromon or Lady Devimon while well, you have no other Digimon on board, you can play an Andromon or Lady Devimon with a different name from your hand without paying the cost. So it is a very powerful card. It lets you get your DNA Digivolving off. It doesn't happen too often, again, because we're playing such low quantities of Lady Devimon Andromon, and uh, Andromon. However, a lot of toolboxing in this deck and a lot of ways to grab both pieces, so it does come up more often than you might think it does. Also, it's a level 5 Tamer, kind of steep, but Geo Grey can play it for free. Don't forget. Uh, moving on, we're playing two copies of the new TK that comes out in BT14. The one that on play, you can add the top card security to hand. If you do put a yellow vaccine, do it on top. And then once per turn, you tap it. If a card is out of the security, get memory. It's very cool. And then we do play one copy of Memory Tamer TK, just for the Memory Tamer, just for the additional toolbox that TK gives you. Because when you play it, add a card from security to hand. If it's yellow, cover one. Card is very good. It's been a staple all along. You love to see it. All right, we're down to 12 cards, 12 options. Four of them are Flame Health Scythe. I still think Flame Health Scythe is a mandatory four of anytime you play Mastamon. You just gotta be able to bring back your things and do minus 6k to something. Combos well with Mastamon, combos well with security just to do some damage. It's always a good card. You can always resolve it. You can always act activate it. 
the card is perfectly fine. And now, because I hate people, I play four copies of Chaos Degradation still. This card is just bonkers bananas against most of the format. All these War Greymon stacks with like Greymon X protection. Yeah, this, this gets around it. There are still a few things out there that, you know, the Chaos Degradation is, it's immune to Chaos Deg basically, but most of the stuff still falls to it. So you gotta play four copies of it to get that card, that big boss monster in security. Uh, and out of, out of security, it just puts a card in security. It's pretty good. The, the card is very strong option. Four more cards to go. We're playing two copies of Emissary of Hope. Deck space is really tight, so we're only doing two copies of it. Plus, it's a little bit weird because you don't really want to emissary into Mastamon. You really want to emissary into Venusmon, but we're emissarying, you know, a, a card you don't play two copies of. It's also reasonable to like emissary a five sometimes or a four on a security, but it doesn't come up as often as you think. So, yes, while well, cheating a card from security to Evo is cool and the healing one if you have TK in play, it is nice. Uh, it doesn't come up as often in this deck as you might think it does because it's not a pure yellow vaccine deck. That is what it is. We play one copy of Colin because it's that one. And the last card we play is one copy of Physical Training. One copy of it because I bottom decked too many purple cards that I need with Physical Training, such as Lady Devimon's. It feels really bad if you bottom deck a Lady Devimon with a Physical Training because you only play a couple of them. You can also bottom deck your Calling and your Devimon. It's really annoying when it happens. So just the one comes up sometimes. Again, you're DNAing for free, and sometimes you're like evolving for one because of Godamon. Sometimes you're evolving for free because of Patamon or Emissary of Hope. Physical training doesn't come up all that often, but the one time it does come up, you'll be lucky you have it, and it is there. And that is all for Mastamon. This deck is very strong, thanks to the card to BT14. I do recommend trying out the deck if you want something new to try, something fun to try. You know, I don't think it's as good as regular Yellow Vaccine, but like, it's definitely capable of tearing on the meta. Obviously, otherwise this deck profile wouldn't exist. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.